let's now start talking about what if I what if I'm not happy with just the energy norm? What if I want a more general norm? How can I say, okay, can I say that the fine element, how good is the fine element solution in some other norm? It turns out in some other norm, I cannot, I can no longer say that, so for example, if I look at the H1 norm, so U minus UH, I can no longer say that this is optimal. In fact, this is not going to be optimal uh, in in all possible uh, finite dimensional in, in all possible members of the finite dimensional space. But I can bound this. I can bound this to be some number times u minus w h for all possible WHs in this finite dimensional space. So I can do that by the following. So first of all, let's define what is U minus UH in the H1 norm. So U minus UH in the H1 norm is the summation of two parts, right? One is the integ uh, integration of u minus uh square plus the derivative of u minus uh square dx. No, no, I actually don't need that because I can I can just uh, I can just uh, start. I don't need to use the Poincaré inequality again. I can just start by uh, I can just start by saying that the, the energy norm is coercive, the, the bilinear form is coercive. So, so what I can say is that u minus uh in the h1 norm squared is less or equal to 1 over b times the energy norm. And we know that the energy norm is the energy norm is uh, the minimizer. So this is less or equal to 1 over b of u minus wh, u minus wh for all the possible whs in xh. And also let's use the continuity of this bilinear form here. So by continuity this is less than c times the the norm of uh, u minus wh. So the error in h1 norm is not exactly minimized, but it is close to minimum in a certain sense. It is close to minimum uh, in that the error is not going to be greater than a certain finite constant times the minimum error you can achieve. Right, so, so because this can be for any WH, this also, the same inequality also is true for the, for the WH that minimizes the, uh, the norm. So it is less than this times the infinimum or the minimum of WH in XH. Uh, u minus wh. Okay, now with that, we can start looking at what rate of convergence do we have. So in finite difference, we can analyze the order of accuracy of the differential approximate uh, of the differential operator, right? So we, if we use a, a central difference to approximate a first order derivative, we know. The, the error goes down like delta x squared. If you use uh, forward difference or backward difference, we know the error goes down only with delta x. So here we can do the same analysis here in finite element once we have that inequality. Because this inequality holds for any wh. So we can easily construct a delta h, uh, construct a wh for which we know the order of accuracy and we know that the the same order of accuracy is going to apply for for the finite different for, for the finite element solution. 
And this is because if you look at the C and B here, the C and B here are the properties of this A, of this bilinear form, right? It has nothing to do with H. It has nothing to do with what kind of approximation we are making. It has nothing to do with the specific XH, right? So, if we can construct a WH, whose uh, so, so that, that also means as we refine the mesh, as we refine the mesh, which also makes the XH to be richer and richer, has more and more approximation power, the C over B is not going to change. Okay, that allows us to build specific WHs. For example, what the WHs we are using here is an interpolant. So let's say we have a U, so that is the green one is U. And we have a finite element a mesh over here that restricts our approximation UH to be piecewise linear functions. So why don't we construct WHs that actually goes through these grid points? So this is going to be our WH. So WH is just the connecting the dots on the function. Of course, the WH is in the space, right? We are trying to approximate. And so let's start to analyze what is the what is this approximation error in H1? So the approximation error in H1. So let's let's call this WH. Uh, this is particular. Let's call the interpolant of U. So I big I interpolant, it's with the H because it's on the particular mesh. So let's figure out what is this U minus interpolant. What is this approximation error? Of course, it has two terms. It has one term that is the L2 error of the interpolant. And also another term that is the L2 error of the derivative of the interpolant. So let's figure out these two terms one by one. And the, the point here is to see how does this error decrease as I refine my mesh. If I know, for example, the error decreases like delta x square as I refine the mesh, then I know that the u minus uh is also going to decrease like delta x square as I refine the mesh, because this uh, this c over b doesn't change as I refine the mesh, right? Okay. So 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 here we go back to Taylor series analysis. So we look at first we need to analyze how big is this approx how what is the maximum difference between the red line and the green line. So let's first look at the maximum difference between the derivatives. And in order to do that, I need to use... So, so first of all, the derivative of the interpolant over a interval is going to be constant, right? It's going to be u at grid point i plus 1 minus u i divided by x i plus 1 minus x i. So that's the slope of this curve over that interval, over the element. Now what we need to do is we need to use what's called the uh, mean value theorem. It basically says that because because du dx averages to this number, right? So it has to the the value of du dx has to have a particular point that is equal to that number. So du dx at a particular c has to be exactly equal to this number here. The proof is pretty simple. So if you 
if all the DUDXs are above that value, then you cannot average to this value. If all the DUDX is below that value, you cannot also average to that value, right? So that means you have to have a certain point DUDX is greater or equal, another point DUDX is less or equal, and because DUDX is a continuous function, so you have to have some point where DUDX is exactly equal to this value. Where C is somewhere between xi and xi plus 1. Alright. So now we have this. Then du dx at any point in eta, that is within the space, now has to equal to du dx at C plus uh, Taylor series analysis again is going to be. Uh, the second order derivative of u to x times eta minus c. Well, this is at c plus o eta minus c squared. And this whole term I claim is order delta x or order h. So let's say h is the maximum where where h is the uh, maximum of xi plus 1 minus xi. Alright, uh, so so this is order h because eta and xi are both in the interval xi and uh, xi plus 1. So the difference between eta and xi has to be OH. Alright, any questions so far? So we already know that the derivative term in the uh, in the Sobolev norm has to be order, uh, order h. And uh, uh, it turns out uh, the same thing happens for the value. The value is actually a lot easier. Um, so u minus u minus the interpolant of u at a particular uh, C is going to be the integral of the difference from xi to C of du dx minus dihu dx dx. Right? We already know this term is OH. So this whole thing because c minus xi is also oh so this guy is oh squared so the Sobolev norm of u minus interpolant of u uh, square uh, well is is going to be equal to integration of u minus ih of u Squared and this term before square is O H square plus D D X of U minus interpolant of U squared and this thing before I squared is O H. So this is whole thing should be O H. So after I squared this is O H squared, this is O H fourth, so this is O H squared. And uh, what I know is that u minus my finite element solution is less or equal to c over b times u minus any wh. And in this case, I just uh, substitute the wh with this interpolant. And uh, so it is going to be less or equal to oh squared. So that gives us uh, a bound on this. Sobolev norm, and of course uh, the bound on L two norm is even uh, is once we have the Sobolev norm, the bounding L two norm is uh, pretty easy. So the L two norm is basically the L two norm is one component of this H one norm, right? So it is also uh, so if I square it is also O H squared, and uh, uh, 